So good morning and welcome to my new video. I'm really, really happy that you're here with me again, joining me in my studio so I don't feel so alone. I just got back from my walk with Lisa. It's a bit of a gloomy morning here this Tuesday morning, but we got our walk in a little bit late because it was raining in the morning. So I just got back, just had something to eat. And I thought now I would talk to you because I've got something really fun to tell you today. We're going to be talking about my very favorite subject, which is art galleries. So for the past 29 years, since 1995, when I graduated from art school, I've been exhibiting in many private art galleries, as well as a couple of museum shows in art centers and all kinds of places where I've exhibited my artwork. And art galleries is a really fun subject for me because it is a really vast subject. There's so much to tell you. So if you are in that stage of your art journey that you're wanting to connect with art galleries and you don't know how and you don't know what they expect, well, you might find this video interesting because I'm going to be talking to you about a little bit about the history of art galleries as well as what to expect from an art gallery if you do sign up to have an exhibition with them, how to apply for shows to art galleries, and what things to look for and be aware of when you do start working with an art gallery. So I wanted to read to you a little bit about the brief history into the birth of art galleries. So in Western cultures from the mid 15th century, a gallery was any long, narrow covered passage along the wall, first used in the sense of a place for art in the, in the 1590s. The first galleries were in the palaces of the aristocracy or in churches. As art collections grew, buildings became dedicated to art and museums were formed. In the 17th century Europe, art was primarily commissioned by the church, aristocracy or wealthy patrons. The first ever gallery was in Florence, Italy in 1581. And in the 18th century England, the Royal Society of the Arts was formed with annual shows in London. Now this was a big thing, the first, you could say the very first big thing for artists. And in the 19th century, the Paris Salon opened in France with their annual exhibitions organ organized by the French Academy. Now this was also a big thing and this became a very pivotal role in promoting Impressionist art. The 20th century saw the emergence of influential art movements such as Cubism to real Surrealism uh, and galleries became crucial spaces for the dissemination of these groundbreaking ideas. The 21st century art galleries saw significant changes for art galleries to survive, they had to embrace technology with virtual exhibitions and online platforms, expanding their reach globally. In my opinion, this changed the entire dynamics of how art galleries operate. And in today's world, I would say that online galleries have changed the dynamics and how the art world operates and it has changed everything for artists too. Because I think artists nowadays don't necessarily need an art gallery. We can go online and make our own shops either on our website or have third party question. And I think about this a lot on a daily basis. How much do we really need art galleries these days?
So I'm just clearing out the air a little bit here in the studio for a nice vibe and energy because today we're going to be talking about one of my very favorite subjects, which is art galleries. Yay! So if you're in that stage of your art journey that you want to apply to art galleries, you might find this talk interesting. What I'm going to talk about today is I'm going to list the different kinds of art galleries that I'm aware of. Some of them I've had some experience with and some not. And I'm going to talk about that experience that I've had with those different types of art galleries. And then later on, we're going to look at the actual process of submitting your artwork to art galleries and what to expect from an art gallery and what an art gallery might expect from you. So let's get on with it. I've written down a list. This is my list of the different types of art galleries. So all the way at the top, we have art galleries that are called high art galleries. So usually art that is exhibited in high art galleries is of very considerable worth. And the gallerists are usually people with degrees in art history and they know about the provenance of art when they deal with deceased artists and they are very well versed in the whole business of art and they are connected to art museums. They are connected to very wealthy people and people of means who can actually buy these artworks that are very, very expensive. And they have a very good eye for what is going to be big next. And an artist that comes to my mind is Jean-Michel Basquiat. So I was in high school when Jean-Michel Basquiat was becoming extremely famous at a very early age. And he was exhibiting at some very high-end art galleries in New York. So I read the definition of high art galleries versus low art galleries online. And it goes like this. High art is appreciated by those with the most cultivated taste, whereas low art is for the masses, accessible and easily comprehended. So basically, we're going to talk about low galleries now, and they are all the other galleries underneath the high art galleries. It's much easier to get into a so-called low art gallery. Now, low, I don't think is the right word for them personally, because we have so many wonderful private galleries and they show artworks that are very interesting and not necessarily, how did they say it, easily comprehended. There's also an art movement called Lobro Art Movement. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It started in the 1990s in LA. A lot of that artwork is not easily comprehended or in, or in my opinion, for the masses. Then we have galleries inside museums, which are smaller gallery spaces intended for the contemporary artist and to bring in more people to the museum because they might have an up and coming artist exhibiting in their small gallery space. Then we have galleries in colleges, wonderful spaces to exhibit too if you are a mid-career artist. Then we have art centers. If you are a beginner artist, art centers are wonderful places to exhibit. Now there are different kinds of art centers. Some are better than others. So just check out what kind of art center it is and if you feel comfortable showing there. But I have noticed that here in the States, they are all really, really different. Then we have online galleries. And personally, I've never exhibited in a so-called online gallery, but I know that they're popping up all the time. Um, lots of them online. Uh, it might work for somebody. Personally, I haven't gotten into that because I don't really see the point of doing that since I already have my own store on my website and people come there and I have my, so and I have my secret store there too, which is open to all my newsletter subscribers. So I give them a personalized experience of shopping in a closed store, so to say, and I put in all my original work in there. So I haven't really seen a need to work with online galleries, but let me know if you've worked with an online gallery and if it worked for you, I'd love to hear.
So this is the largest box that I got to unpack. And it's a professional art box. It's called Art, art Deluxe Box. It's got a ton of padding in it and it is really nice and sturdy. It's got this protective layer here on top and it'll protect the box from punctures and then it has three layers of foam in it. I took one of them out because I couldn't fit the painting in there with three layers of foam but two was enough. Alright, we got the last painting, the mid-sized painting, unwrapped and this one is looking good. It's in very good condition, no scratches, no dents, no nothing, so very happy with that. Okay, so here we are. So what I wanted to say first is that do not get discouraged. You might have already submitted your art to some art galleries and just haven't heard back. Well, let me tell you that I've done that tons and tons of times and it is the nature of the game. You have to get used to not either hearing back or hearing back negative answers. And the reason for that is, well, first of all, don't take it personally. And the reason for that is because each gallery has their own vision. It's like an artist. An artist has their own voice and has their own vision. Or art galleries also have their own vision of what kind of art they want to exhibit. So you might have sent your submission and they told you that they're not interested. Well, there might be different reasons for that, for not being interested in, in your art. One of them is because when they choose their roster of artists, they want them to complement each other and not compete with each other. So if your art is too similar to another artist's artwork that they're already representing, well, they're not going to want to take you on because there would be a conflict between that artist's work and your, your work. So sometimes for purely those kind of reasons, they don't take you on. So let's look at the different things that an art gallery is looking for in an artist when they submit their artwork. So I've written down my notes here. Number one, they're looking for craftsmanship. They're looking for originality and they're looking for professionalism. So craftsmanship means that they want really high quality art. Whatever your technique is, they want to see the quality in that technique. And another thing that they're looking for is personality in your art. So it has to have a very particular and unique voice. Now this comes with years of practice, so don't get discouraged. Finding your voice can take a few years I've changed my voice tons of times throughout my career. It's never stayed stagnant or the same. It's 
cut, got a kind of like a general similarity, but it's okay to change your voice because you're growing as a soul and you're growing as a person. They also want professionalism from you. So professionalism means in the way that you communicate with them, the way that you communicate on social media and professionalism in every sense of the word when they are dealing with you. So originality, craftsmanship and professionalism. They also want to be sure that you will have your artwork ready when it is time to exhibit. Because the worst thing that can happen for an art gallery is that they've committed to a show and you don't have your work ready. So it might sound simple, but it does happen sometimes that artists just, they don't get the work done. Okay, so what can you expect from an art gallery when you submit your artwork? Number one most important thing is to remember that you have a contract with the art gallery. Do not do work with an art gallery unless you have a written contract. And number two, sometimes that I've forgotten about some in the past, is that the contract is signed. Believe me, I have had a couple of art galleries that did not sign the contract. And that is almost as if there's no contract at all. Galleries here in the United States usually charge 50%. It can vary, but it's common. So if it is a 50-50% contract, then make sure that, for example, it mentions who is going to send the artwork back to you. Is it the art gallery or do you have to pay for return shipment? Now, generally the rule is that the artist sends the artwork to the gallery, but if it's not stated in the contract, they will expect you to pay for return shipment. So careful with that because return shipment can be very, very expensive, especially if you are overseas or even here within the United States, shipping can be very expensive. Another very important um, thing to remember is payment. In the contract, it has to say when you will be paid, within how much time after the closing of the exhibition will you be paid. And what is the form of payment? If it doesn't say in the contract about how the payment is done, you might want to do that through email and ask them to add that into the contract. So remember, a good relationship with an art gallery is or could be compared to a good marriage. If you have a really good marriage with your art gallery, it's going to last. If the marriage is bad, it's not going to last. So remember, they are humans just like we are, and there's emotions involved, and people want to get treated with, with respect and professionalism and understanding. So yeah, it's a good thing to remember. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to add here is that if you've been submitting your artwork to a ton of art galleries and you're getting super frustrated because you're not getting any answers back, well, here are a few reasons why that might not might be happening. One of them is that you are not writing the emails correctly. In the email, you have to add the JPEGs or the images of your artwork. Now they have to be really crisp and clear and wonderful quality. So make sure that the JPEGs are really, really wonderful. Don't send really big images, but big enough so that they can zoom in and look at the details of your artwork. Don't forget to add the dimensions, the title, the year it was made, the technique, and all that um, lovely info about your artwork so that they get an idea of the size of the artwork and how it was made. Another important thing to include is your artist statement or, or and artist bio. An artist statement is where you tell them about your art philosophy and the ideas behind the artwork and an, art, and an artist bio is where you tell them a brief history about your relationship to art and perhaps your schooling or not schooling in art. So I think I've covered most of it. I'm sure there'll be uh, plenty more later on that I think of. But next I would like to tell you my stories behind working with art galleries, the 
a couple of horror stories and a couple of really good stories. Um, so that's coming up next. Okay, so let's start with the horror stories. One of the horror stories would be that I entered into a group show in, Aust in Australia. Now, this time there was no way for me to find out about the history of the art gallery because it was totally new. And working with a new gallery can be tricky because there's no way to find out what, what kind of history they have working with artists. And what happened was that after a year, it, it all looked really promising. They had a wonderful website and I was really, really excited about the exhibition. But what happened was that they went bankrupt. And there were artists that tried to sue them because they were not sending their artwork back to them. But I didn't want to get into that. And a lot of the, a lot of the artists lost their work, including me. I did not get my original artwork back. I did not get my J. Clee limited editions back either. So I lost that work, unfortunately. So that was one of my horror stories. So I thought I would come out here because it's so lovely. It's been raining, but the air is so nice and fresh. And I thought I would show you these lovely flowers just uh, that I just found on my walk. They're from our neighborhood. See how I get inspired by all the nature and beauty we have around us. So I remembered I needed to tell you a couple more things before I go. One of the things is if you can go local, meaning if you can find a gallery in your area, it's always best to go local because that way you can keep track of your work and you can actually see the physical location of the gallery. The physical location of a gallery is really, really important and I forgot to mention that. So if you are going to work with a gallery that is nowhere near you and you can't go visit them, there's always Google Maps and you can check out the area and just check out their history and see if they are a gallery that is respected in their area and let me see if i was missing anything else so yeah if you're if you're only just beginning in your art journey do give it a go exhibiting is a wonderful opportunity to see your artwork on one wall or in one gallery space and to get your voice out there and you'll also get lots of feedback from people because they're getting to see the whole collection so I wish you luck submitting your artwork. And if you have any questions about how 
to submit or anything that I discussed here earlier, please leave me your comments and your questions in the comment section below. And if you love this video and you want to support my YouTube channel, please go and subscribe, comment, and I will see you soon.